Hello YouTubers, today we are going to discuss timers in the STM32 microcontrollers. Um, this is a huge topic and it will probably span over a number of videos. There's no way I can <clears throat> even begin to scratch the surface in one video if I aim to keep the time at around 10 to 15 minutes per video. Now, we are going to use, as you can see here, we're going to use our black pill uh, board again, uh, which, as you may remember, have an STM32F411 um, microcontroller on it. <coughs> and if we look at the documentation for the STM32411 in the data sheet, and the block diagram, you will see that on the bosses, the internal peripheral bosses, there is a number of timers attached. On APB1, we have timer 2, timer 3, timer 4, and timer 5. And on the other boss, APB2, we have timer 1, timer 9, 10, and 11. Um, in the data sheet, we can also see the timer, the overview of timers, and we can see we have something they, that is called an advanced control timer, timer one. And then we have a number of general purpose timers with timer two, five, three, four, nine, 10, and 11. And they can run at different speeds, have different capture channels etc etc what is a timer well a timer is essentially just a counter if we look at the reference documentation uh, this one in that we have a schematic of a general purpose uh, that was not good uh, where was it Let's search for it. Advanced control timer and general purpose timer. And there. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, you can see that a timer is actually centered around a counter. So you will have an internal clock signal or an external clock signal uh, going through some trigger circuitry and then go into a so-called prescaler and then into a counter and then based when that counter either if it counts down it when it reaches zero or if it counts up when it reaches some auto reload value then it can for example trigger an interrupt um for the purpose of this video, I have already created a project which I call Black Pill Timer 1 and I have set up the basic uh, stuff uh, except blinking the LED in this time, but I have set up so I can print every second exactly like I did in the previous project. So if we run this application, you'll see it starts the Black Pill and then it prints out a tick every second but if we look at the device right now i am not flashing the led yet and rather than in the previous project we handled this in the while loop but rather than doing that in this case we will handle this with a timer so let's go into stm32 cube mx configuration and you can see i have created exactly like i did in the previous projects uh, but it's interesting to look at the clock configuration. We're running this uh, MCU at 100 megahertz. Let's get rid of that. And you'll see that it generates a timer clock internally. And both APB1 and APB2 are, in this case, running at 100 megahertz. That is important to remember. So if you look up at the configuration, you have a whole section down here with timers. And we can just pick a random general purpose timer, timer 4, for example. And we want to, we can see over here, we can basically trigger this from another timer, or we can slave it from another timer, or we can simply clock it from the internal 
clock. So in this case, the input clock to this timer will be 100 megahertz. You see, we have a prescaler, which is a 16-bit value, and we have a counter period. So if we want a frequency, say we want to blink our LED once a second, that means we need to toggle it every half a second. So we need to run this at a frequency of 2 hertz. Um, so if we fire up a calculator, uh, let me find that calculator is there. So if we take a 100 megahertz clock, which is 100 million, if we divide that, we need to divide with less than 16 bit. So if we divide that by 10,000 first, that is, of course, 10,000. And if we want two out of that, we need to divide by 5,000 then we get 2 hertz. So we could use here a prescaler of 10,000. Now, I'll get back to the details about this later, but you need to subtract 1 actually. So if we prescale with 9999, that is 10,000. So we divide the clock by 10,000, and then we do a counter clock of 4999, 5,000. So this will lead to this timer being triggered every uh, twice every second. And then we can go over to our interrupt settings and we can enable a global interrupt for timer 4. So we will get an interrupt every two seconds out of this. So let's um, ba -ba -ba, generate the code. There we go. Um, so the first thing we need to do is uh, to start the the timer, and that is being done by a, a timer. Where is it? Timer base start it for interrupt. So this command basically fires up the timer and you can see it suggests timer 4 which is the timer that we have. So this will basically start the timer and it will then fire and interrupt every second. As usual most of the documentation of the hell libraries are actually in the source code so if we look at the source code for the timer uh, part of the library, you can see up here in the beginning that, as usual, there's a number of callbacks. Remember when we were playing with the external interrupt, we actually used a callback. And here you can see we have callbacks for a number of things. The interesting one uh, in this case is period elapsed. So we have one here called Hell Tim period elapse callback. So that will be called every time our uh, timer has elapsed. And you can see it's a weak function, so we can overwrite this in our code. So if we go or we copy that and we go in up here, we can overwrite the timer callback. And then we can uh, we can simply toggle uh, GPIO, uh, BIO, toggle pin, and we can toggle our LED port and our LED pin. And that's pretty much it. Since right now we only have one timer, there's no real need to uh, check whether it's the correct timer, but normally you would uh, check whether it's the correct timer if you m have multiple timers running at the same time. So that's basically it. Uh, uh, let's try this out. And first we will build the project. And you see it built correctly. Now let's flash it. Uh, but let's look at the device while we are doing that. 
and we try to flash that and if we are lucky you can see that the led is flashing so we start the timer the timer has been configured to generate and interrupt every 500 milliseconds precisely and every time there is an interrupt we basically toggle the led pin it is as simple as that uh, first use of a timer and um, well I will dive into a lot more functionality of timers. I want to point out uh, before we end this video uh, an interesting read if we look at uh, Bob, Bob, let's go back to our official documentation. Uh, SC has provided an entire application note just talking about timers. So if we look at the introduction to timers, uh, cross series, uh, they can do a lot of things. Uh, they can generate pulse feed modulation. We'll do that probably in the next video. They can uh, use to uh, check external stuff. They can drive motors. They can, uh, well, a lot of things. We will dive into this much more in later videos but this was a basic introduction into timers as usual if you appreciate the information in this video please click down and click a like and uh, please subscribe if you want a notifi notification when i put up the next video which will probably be about timers and pulse width modulation but i'll decide that on a later time that's it bye bye have a wonderful day